はい、はいえー、とそれでは、えーとえー、ちょっとあの講師の,あのエヴァリストさんが来られなかったのでちょっとすごく焦ってたんですけども、えーとえー、今たった今あのご登場になられましたので、えー、と京都大学千葉大学龍谷大学の研究グループの共催で。えー、行われます、えー、ウェビナー「アフリカにおける伝統医療と新型コロナウイルスカメルーンの事例始めたい」というふうに思いますで、えー、ご紹介が遅れましたけども私はあの龍谷大学の教員している落合と言いますよろしくお願いします本日の司会を務めますえっ、ー、と、えー、本日は、えー、とカメルーンのズワラ大学の、えーとえー、エバリスト・フォンゾッシさんの、えー、に、えー、とご登場ご登壇いただいてえっ、ー、とカメルーンの事例についてご紹介いただきたいと思っています。で、ただあの、えー、通信事情がカメルーンあの決して良いわけではありませんので、今回はあのエバリストさんから事前にあのパワーポイントに音声をつけたものを送っていただいておりまして、でそれをえっ、ー、と皆さんとシェアして、えー、その後。えっ、ー、とエバリストさんとえっ、ー、と質疑応答したいと思います。で、このあのパワーポイントのあの音声付きのものというのは25分なんですけども、あのその25分の中でえっ、ー、と、えー、エバリストさんはえっ、ー、とカメルーンの現在のあのカメルーンというのは中部アフリカの中では一番感染がコロナウイルスの感染が進んでいる国の一つなんですけれども、そのカメルーンの事例。をご紹介状況をご紹介いただきましてその後半で、えー、と伝統医療の、えー、とがどのようにそのこの緊急事態に対応しているのかと、えー、近代医療とか生物医療といった我々の医療我々の身近にある医療にアクセスできないそういう状況の中でカメルーンの特にドゥアラのとかカメルーンの人たちがどのようにこの COVID-19 っていうその緊急事態に自分なりにブリコラージュっていうかこう対応しているのかっていうことをあのえっ、ー、とご紹介いただくような形になっています。そしてその25分のプレゼンテーションの後、えっ、ー、とエバリストさんとえっ、ー、と英語で Q&A をしたいと思います。であのえっ、ー、と視聴者の皆さんはえっ、ー、とまだ今の段階ではご発言できないようになっていますので、もしご質問があればえっ、ー、とこの Q&A というのがこの Zoom の下の方にあると思うんですけども、そこにあの英語であの質問を書いていただければ私が読み上げるようにしますしあるいはあまりにもちょっとあの書くの面倒くさくて難しいということであればあの手を挙げていただければあのえご発言できるように私の方でしますので、えー、とえご発言いただいてもいいと思います。えなお、えー、と本日は私とエバリストさん以外に、えー、と千葉大学の酒井恵子さんそれから石戸光さんそして京都大学の平野美沙さん東洋学園大学の玉井隆さんがあのパネリストとしてあのご参加いただいておりまして、えーとえー、25分のプレゼンテーションの後に、えー、とに、まあ、もし質問とかがご意見があれば、えー、このパネリストからしていただいてその後、えー、皆さんの Q&A を行えればと思います。なおあの、えー、とプライバシーの問題がありますのであの写真撮影とかこうパソコンの画面を撮ったりするっていうようなことは控えていただければというふうにあの思います。えー、ちょっと早口ですけど大体ご説明をいたしました、えー、それでは、えー、と時間ももったいないと思いますので、えー、と早速、えー、と25分のプレゼンテーションにあの移りたいと思います、えー、とじゃあ Good morning エバリストさん Thank you for joining us Thank you very much And I'm going to play your video of your presentation Then, after the 25 minute presentation, we are going to have a QA session. Is it okay? okay. Right. Okay. Thank you very much.、Uh, so, I'm going to pray. Dewa, これからビデオを共有いたします。Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share with you about traditional medicine and COVID 19 pandemics in Africa. Uh, my presentation will be a case study from Cameroon, which is a country located in Central Africa. The outline of this presentation will be based on five main points.、Uh, I will first give general information about Cameroon, then, I will present about the COVID 19 epidemiological situation and the country response strategy. Uh, followed by the Cameroonian traditional medicine and the COVID 19 pandemics. 
the issues and challenges and the pathways for research and development. As I said before, Cameroon is located in Central Africa. This is a country which is culturally very diverse with more than 250 different ethnic groups. The country is also ecologically very diverse from the southern part of the country to the northern part. The country offers a variety of ecosystems, including the tropical humid dense forest in the south, the marine and coastal ecosystem, freshwater ecosystems, mountain ecosystems, savanna woodlands, and the semi-arid areas in the northern part of the country. This is why Cameroon is often called Africa in miniature. The country is also located in what is called the Congo Basin Forest. This is the second world largest contiguous rainforest after the Brazilian Amazon. And uh, the country with more than 9,000 plant species recorded at the National Herbarium of Cameroon and hundreds of animal species, uh, the country is often recognized as a hotspot of biodiversity conservation in Central Africa. Just to give some key features of the Cameroon health care system, it is to be noted that in Cameroon, traditional and conventional medicine are all part of the national health care system. And in Cameroon, access to health care is a challenge. Only one out of every 1,000 patients is able to see a specialist. Only three out of 20 patients are able to buy prescribed drugs in hospitals. This means that more than 80% of the population strongly rely on traditional medicine for their health care. Traditional medicine, though an important component of the healthcare system, is still at the early stage of formal recognition. Uh, previously, a national strategy for the development and integration of traditional medicine has been elaborated and is currently under implementation. There are a variety of stakeholders involved in the implementation of this strategy, including the government, the government is mainly active through the uh, Ministry of Public Health, the Science Ministry of Scientific Research and Innovation, the Ministry of Higher Education through the university researchers, and the traditional healers who are organized in various associations of traditional healers. Since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic in December 2019 in Wuhan, China, the first case was reported in Cameroon in early March 2020. And these first cases was mainly imported from Europe and uh, there was a specific flight from the French company Air France that was pointed as the flight that brought into the country many infected patients. Since then, the number of cases have been rising. And according to the recent epidemiological update, the cumulative number of cases is more than 18,000 infected patients. The cumulative number of deaths is about 408. The number of recovered patients is about 16,000 and currently the active cases are about 1,800 cases. Uh, globally in Cameroon, the, based on this epidemiological situation, Cameroon is recognized as the most affected country in Western Central Africa and the fifth in Sub-Saharan Africa. This makes Cameroon currently an epicenter of COVID-19 pandemics in Africa. Since this outbreak of COVID-19 in Cameroon, there have been a variety of measures taken by the government to counter the propagation of the infection. The first step measures include the ban of visa and international travels, all schools closed, 
gathering of more than 50 persons prohibited, bars, restaurants and entertainment spot closed from 6 p.m., ban of overloading in buses and taxis, preference to electronic communication and digital tools for meeting and walks, observance of hygiene measures recommended by the government and the World Health Organization. After these first step measures, an evaluation showed that the number of cases continued rising and the second step measures include testing, tracking infected patients and treating infected patients. There has been also an alleviation of some restriction measures previously taken. These include, for example, the reopening of bars and restaurants, the ban of restriction on public transport, and these alleviation measures were seriously criticized by the civil society organizations. Other second step measures include the mandatory wearing of face masks. In addition, Cameroon also elaborated a COVID-19 preparedness and response plan with the facilitation of the United Nations Development Programme in Cameroon, the World Food Programme, the World Bank and the Global Fund for Medical Supplies. The government also launched a national solidarity fund that received over $40 million cash and significant material contribution from the civilians. The implementation of these measures has witnessed a certain number of difficulties. Among these difficulties, there was a poor capacity to scale up testing and contact tracking. As a consequence of this difficulty, the current counting of individual infections, recoveries and deaths is likely not to provide the real pictures of the situation because of the scarcity of test kits. Another difficulty was the inadequate provision of intensive care units and ventilation support for seriously ill patients. There was also lack of adequate protective kits for medical staff, and this has resulted in many medical staff getting infected from COVID-19. Another difficulty is linked to the challenge in implementation of community education programs emphasizing hand hygiene and social distancing measures. This is particularly critical in poor, overcrowded and urban areas, even in rural areas, because in Cameroon, even up to now, uh, in most localities, mainly in rural areas, most of the population still consider COVID-19 as a fake. As a consequence, there is poor awareness and poor participation of the population in the uh, implementation of the restriction measures. There is also poor compliance of the population to the barrier measures prescribed by the government and the World Health Organization. Another challenge is the lack of running water in most localities of Cameroon. And also uh, the, the, the other difficulty faced was the rising critics over the embezzlement and mismanagement of COVID-19 solidarity fund. Uh, this has led Cameroon both to pressure from rights groups and the government has ordered investigation into the management of this fund. In this context, the number of new cases of COVID-19 continued rising in the country. At the same time, patients started fleeing hospitals for fear of becoming infected because hospital was considered as potential or hotspots of contamination. Another difficulty was that the health personnel was sometimes accused of considering every patient checked for temperature above 37 degree or showing fever or any health complication as potential COVID-19 patients. This has led many patients 
be locked down to consult hospital for any disease. Another challenge or difficulty was in the management of the dead corpse of COVID infected patients. This is because in Cameroon, culturally, when a family member died, family are used to keeping the corpse in the mortuary and preparing to organize a funeral ceremony for their dead person. As the government prescribed, the immediate burial of patients uh, who died from COVID-19, this has created a cultural shock within the community wide. As a consequence of all this, there have been a kind of stigmatization of infected patients, leading to reluctance of patients to attend hospitals. And at the same time, Cameroon's traditional healers progressively became about overwhelmed by the number of people seeking herbal medicine for prevention and treatment of COVID-19. It is important to note that historically, traditional medicine and local belief has always played an important role in situation of epidemics through time. Even during the outbreaks of the SARS-CoV-1 in the year 2002 or 2003, there are scientific evidence showing that a variety of plants were investigated for their antiviral compounds against this coronavirus. Even today, the local population worldwide are showing deep attachment to popular medicine to prevent or to protect them against COVID-19 from all over the world. In Burkina Faso and Benin, there are clinical trials that are underway on a phytomedicine called apiverin from Benin, which is alleged to be effective against the 2019 novel coronavirus. In Algeria, there are newspapers reporting the increased consultation of herbalists in the search of traditional antiviral and anti-flu recipes. In Madagascar, the Malagasy Institute of Applied Research developed a herbal tea based on the plant species Artemisia annua. And the herbal tea is called COVID Organics that is claiming preventive and curative properties against COVID-19. In Cameroon, since the outbreak of the disease, several medicinal plants got popular in social media as a last remedy for the management of COVID-19. These include uh, Cisigium aromaticum, uh, the common garlic allium sativum, aloe vera, the common ginger, gingiber officinal, uh, picralima nitida, venonia amygdalina, and citrus limon. Increasingly, uh, traditional medicine practitioners are confirming that the demand of herbal medicine is growing higher and higher in the country. And even despite the lack of scientific evidence, they claim that their potion treat all symptoms of COVID-19 and have saved the infected patients from death. Among the herbal drugs in the spotlight in Cameroon for the management of COVID-19, there is this herbal drug called Corocure developed by a cardiologist and which is a combination of antiretroviral drugs and traditional medicine as a solution to cure the COVID-19. Another herbal drug is the COVID beta developed by Dr. Fro, which is founder and promoter of a naturopathic institute in Cameroon, and which is also claiming to treat the COVID-19. Probably one of, one of the most prominent traditional cures in the spotlight in Cameroon currently is the LXC COVID and ATSA COVID proposed free of charge to patients with confirmed COVID-19 positive tests by the Archbishop of Douala, His Grace Samuel Cleda. 
Actually, this Catholic Archbishop is claiming to have treated more than 10,000 COVID-infected patients. Elixir COVID and Axat COVID are prepared based on two common medicinal plant species growing in Cameroon, including aloe vera and trichilia emetica, as reported by the author and the extensive traditional uses of these two species has encouraged scientists to explore and document several of their biological activities, including anti-infective, anti-inflammatory, anti-malaria, antioxidant, antitussive, antifungal, bactericidal, and antiviral properties. With this growing popularity of traditional medicine in the management of COVID-19 pandemics in Cameroon, the attitude of the government has been quite mitigated. At the beginning, the Ministry of Public Health and the World Health Organization sent strong warning to the traditional healers about quack claimings for uh, treating COVID-19 pandemics. Then, uh, progressively, there have been a growing attention given to traditional medicine. And one important step in this uh, growing attention of the government was a high-level meeting held on the 25th of June 2020 at the National Assembly of Cameroon bringing together parliamentarians, government members, traditional healers and medical doctors to exchange on the potentials of traditional medicines in the fight against COVID-19 pandemics in Cameroon. Despite these great potentials of the medicinal plants of Cameroon, there are a certain number of issues facing traditional medicine in the fight against COVID-19 pandemics. One first and important challenge is how to provide evidence of effectiveness and safety of herbal drugs. This is quite critical because in traditional medicine, the history of successful management of a disease using a traditional drug is an evidence of effectiveness. Whereas in conventional medicine, the development of new drugs must be based on systematic research providing evidence of effectiveness and safety. Another challenge is the lack of complete and conserved knowledge repository on national pharmacopoeia and the medicinal metabolite diversity among the country medicinal plants. With this weakness, uh, there is difficulties in using traditional medicine in early response strategies to emerging diseases. Another issue is that most of the research on bioactive compounds of medicinal plants in Cameroon uh, up to now remain mainly academics and very limited applied research in herbal development has been developed in Cameroon. Another issue is the poor participation of local pharmaceutical industry in the field of herbal drug development. Yet, uh, recent researches in China, in Iran, in Indonesia are confirming the inhibitory effect of some secondary metabolites derived from medicinal plants on the 2019 novel coronavirus and many Cameroonian medicinal plant species can be source material for this secondary metabolite. Also, experience from traditional healers in Cameroon is showing that plants that are traditionally used in the management of symptoms of COVID-19 are proving effective as potential therapeutic ingredients. And currently, there are ongoing research by a team of Cameroonian university researchers to make a comprehensive assessment of these species, including the plants with confirmed immunomodulatory immunostimulant activity, 
confirmed antioxidant activity, confirmed anti-inflammatory, antiviral properties as a database of medicinal plants showing promising avenues for uh, the management of COVID-19 pandemics. Among the secondary metabolites investigated in China, in Iran, in Indonesia for their confirmed inhibitory activity on the 2019 novel coronavirus, there are metabolites like allicin, curcumin, gingerol, hesperidin, quercetin, among others. Allicin is the common uh, chemical compound of the common garlic allium sativum. And uh, these secondary metabolites, there are literature evidence supporting the strong antimicrobial activity. Uh, their activities in stimulating the immune cells concerning the curcumin, for example, from the common curcumin. Uh, turmeric uh, curcuma longa. There are uh, literature evidence supporting that curcumin has antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, antiviral, antifungal activities and that is not toxic to humans. There are also scientific evidence showing that curcumin enhances the, the immunity. Concerning the epicatechin galat from the common T. camellia sinensis, there are scientific evidence showing that regular consumption of green tea decreases influenza infection rate, some cold symptoms, and gargling with tea uh, catechins may protect against the development of influenza infections. Another secondary metabolite with confirmed inhibitory activity on the 2019 novel coronavirus is gingerol, which is a substance from the common ginger, Zingibe officinal. And uh, gingerol has been shown to have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory activity. Hesperidin from the common uh, citrus species is scientifically documented to increase antioxidant defense, modulate the immune system activity, and also prevent intracellular replication of the chikungunya virus and inhibit the assembly of long-term production of infectious hepatitis C virus. Quercetin from the citrus limon is also scientifically documented for treating chronic pneumonia, inhibiting cytokine production, inhibiting inflammatory inflammation mediator, and inhibiting uh, herpes virus. To conclude, we can say that Cameroon's medicinal plant potential is immense and is a promising resource from a perspective of novel drug development against this COVID-19 pandemics. And uh, despite the lack of scientific evidence, traditional medicine has proven effective in COVID-19 management in Cameroon. There are thousands of infected patients that have recovered using the symptom-based herbal remedies proposed by traditional medicine practitioners and uh, to enhance the contribution of traditional medicine in the fight of these pandemics, there is a need for capacity building, there is a need for financial support to stimulate active and applied research on medicinal products and drug discovery. This will be the end of my presentation and I thank you all for your kind attention.